Hi, everyone. So Ed and I have more in common than you might think for being Strata Chair. We were both born in England. We both have two consonants in our first names. Uh, and we both like data. So we did a salary survey uh, last year. You know, we were just interested in what people were doing. Pretty typical salary uh, survey tools and stuff online. A lot more from New York, from, from Santa Clara. About 500 people and mostly US. And that's what we're going to focus on is, is the US. And in the US, it's not a surprise at an O'Reilly event that we have a kind of a California overrepresentation. And sure enough, there's a lot more people there. Uh, the one that we found interesting was Colorado, our data scientist skiers. But we found no pattern that it was one company. It's just there's a lot going on there in the space. Uh, it's also probably not a surprise that California, Maryland, and Washington had the highest medians. Uh, both you know, high cost areas and DC salaries uh, in this space are high. Um, we will go to where the kind of companies people come from. And it is typical at O'Reilly events that we get a lot of people who are in the software business. And that's what you see here. You know, 42% came from either VARs or, or people who are, are doing data. The other big one was government and education. And we're like heartened to see that so many people are focused on that uh, area. And we also looked at the type of uh, organizations, whether they're public or private, and a uh, fair number of private uh, that we see. And of all those segments, the early startups had the highest salaries. Hmm, I don't know what's going on with that, but time to do a startup. Uh, we asked a fundamental question in the uh, survey about whether you work primarily on data or you're like more peripheral to it. And the folks who responded, 60% were uh, in the data uh, field. And one thing we noticed about them is they're be better educated. About, like they had about 67, 68% were PhDs or masters compared to about half for the uh, rest of the crowd. And they were younger. Uh, there. Technical crowd. But even the managers were using the tools, and that's what we're going to talk about next. These are the top tools that people have. So there were a lot more tools on the list than what we have here. And one, I guess it's not a surprise, we heard some of the other speakers talk about it, that SQL was still the top thing being used. We're also kind of surprised that R and Python getting more use than Excel uh, from this crowd. And you know, Hadoop. I think this would show like a much higher representation than you probably see in the market of, of Hadoop users. OK, next time you're out and you're with a data scientist, have them get the bill. You guys are a highly paid lot. So the uh, median income is about 110K. Like 40% is around, I mean, 25% quartile is about 90K, and the 75% quartile is 140K. I'll say one thing about the methodology. We had 10K increments on the survey, and there was a cap around 250. So that's why we're always using medians. Um, we did, I was going to swear, and I won't. We did a real lot of, of cluster analysis. We cross-correlated every tool with everything we could. And we did find that there were two groups. I'm just showing the gratuitous graph to show that we did all that clustering work. And the two things we did find is that people who used the kind of SQL Excel world were, were together, and the people who were in the Hadoop and the open source tools were a little different. And we kind of hypothesized that there was a maturity thing. So you can see that in the Hadoop, the salaries go up the more tools you know. And there really is no pattern on the SQL side. And what we think is going on there is the maturity of the tools. You need more to piece together more things in the Hadoop world to get things done, where SQL and Excel and associated tools are, um, are mature and do, and do a lot. S supply and demand. Uh, scarce resources like Hadoop, machine learning, knowledge, end up you know, getting bid up. And the more traditional tools, where there's just a more mature market, um, just, just came in a little lower. So, in conclusion, highly paid. There are these two clusters in here. So for all you folks who are trying to service this market, it's good to acknowledge that. And I think we'll see a dynamic change in that. And that for scarce skills, it's a dynamic, high demand market for some things. And that's what raises uh, salaries. Uh, 
we've got a paper that's gonna come out after this, and we're gonna have uh, another salary. I just wanna mention that we use Owen Robbins, for those of you who know Jesse, it's Owen's, uh, Jesse is son, I'll get that right, and um, Alan Norin and John King worked on the work at O'Reilly, so I just wanna acknowledge their work, and thanks a lot, and see you at Santa Clara. <laughs>